Okay, so once uh, the wings are uh, good and dry, uh, you can do a couple of different things. Uh, you can build up uh, more layers of paper mache. You can actually use the paper mache strips to, uh, you know, kind of uh, fold them up and uh, make textures that look like uh, feathers. Um, I am actually going to use a material called paper clay, and. Um, I'm not sure how many different brands there are. I have uh, this brand, Creative Paper Clay, and I, I, I like it better than uh, the paper clay that I make uh, myself. So I'm going to show you how to use this. Uh, as with other forms of paper clay, um, including the clay that you make yourself, and also um, other air dry clays. Uh, you have to really watch um, and make sure that it stays moist enough as you work with it. And uh, to do that, you can uh, first of all keep it in an airtight uh, container. I have it in this plastic Ziploc. You need to want to make sure that the zipper is tightly sealed. And if it begins to dry out as you're working with it, you can add just you know a drop or two of water. Um, once it's dry, I don't think that you can really um, rehydrate it enough to actually work it. But um, again, as with other air dry clays, you want to be sure to seal it. So um, this is, is a little bit stickier than um, polymer clay, and so I don't actually roll this out. Um, I've tried rolling it, and it sticks to the um, to the table a little bit more than I like. Uh, makes it difficult. So I'm going to uh, just kind of pinch it out into a flat uh, kind of a pancake. And uh, this wing was made uh, with the paper clay for the feathers. So I'm going to just show you the technique that I use to do that. Okay, so um, the first thing that I'm doing is making each individual feather. And I'm actually going to move this one. This one isn't completely dry and I don't want it to get uh, wrecked. I'm going to put the primary feathers on first and I am overlapping it a little bit on the um, back side. I'm making these particular feathers a little bit longer than uh, some of the other feathers that I'll be making because uh, more of them should be showing. If uh, the forms and the textures that you are adding to the surface don't really stick, you can always um, just add some uh, white glue uh, to the surface to adhere it better and if you see any areas kind of popping off a little bit um, even before this has dried you can add some glue to it. But you don't want to just lay it on the surface, you want to press it into the surface. Then as these get, these primary feathers get closer, and in fact I actually want to overlap these a little bit more. See the, how the clay already started to adhere to the surface there? And pull away. That's what you want is Okay, now to make the kind of feathery texture, I'm actually using an awl, a book awl, just because that's what I had handy. Um, you could also use a toothpick. And I'm supporting 
the clay with my finger underneath as I'm texturing it. Otherwise I would tear the clay. This clay is not um, super elastic. Okay, so you can see that that uh, texture is quite pronounced. Now I can uh, press the clay into the support material a little bit more firmly and that kind of makes the texture a little bit more gentle so it's not quite so um, uh, dramatic. Okay, and then you just start layering feathers on top. Let's see, I actually want one that's a little bit... Um, try not to pick up the wing that you're working on with these feathers. Try to hold it, pick it up from other angles because uh, they are quite fragile. You can, uh, if, if one breaks, uh, you can easily fix it though by getting a, just a scrap piece of paper And uh, putting just some white glue on it, either PVA or Elmer's or you know whatever brand you use, and uh, and gluing it to the back of it. Okay, and then when you paint it, you won't even be able to see it. So just set your mind at ease about that. I'm trying to overlap them. Okay, so see I'm layering this one on top of more than one. And once again, supporting the feathers that extend beyond the paper mache support with I'm supporting them with my fingers. Okay, continue to build up uh, your your textures. This works for feathers. This works um, could work for for hair, um, and it can also work for like scales, whether for reptile or fish or something. Um, obviously, you would do a little things a little bit differently. Uh, scales wouldn't have these uh, forms extended beyond um, the support, and um, and hair would, you know, obviously be shaped differently, but uh, this is one approach that you could use to uh, creating either of those as well. To create some uh, additional textures uh, for the head, I'm using some uh, puffy paint. Um, it's just uh, it's just kind of thick acrylic paint that is uh, in one of these squeeze bottles, and you can test it out on a piece of scrap paper to clear out the nozzle. You can do this uh, before or after you paint it. Um, I'm doing it before, obviously. Um, and then I'm going to uh, bring the feathers up into uh, the painted textures. Okay, welcome back. I just want to uh, show a few things that uh, I'm working on on the dragon. Uh, I put a single coat of paint just on the head and then I also used the Sculpey to put uh, the stomach on and I painted that just to seal it and also to differentiate it from the 
uh, additional feathers that I was going to add. I'm adding a row of feathers on this side and then I'm going to add a row on this side because I want those feathers to be underneath the layers above. So that's why I'm starting down here. I finished putting the uh, feathers on the tail starting at the tip and then working my way down. Um, these uh, feathers on uh, the bum are still pointing upward. Okay, so they're continuing this line um, and then they are ending here. Okay, then I'm adding some additional feathers that are changing direction. Okay, they're starting here sideways and then they're gradually pointing down. Okay, and um, now I'm going to start probably about like right in here with some smaller feathers and building that uh, upward so that I can continue to layer on top of them. And those are all going to be pointing down. Um, I'm not going to put feathers at the very base of the uh, legs or the forelegs. I'm going to use uh, the um, puffy acrylic paint that's actually for fabric and uh, add the textures that way for the very bottom parts of the legs. And I'm not doing the feet until the very end uh, because I don't want them to get knocked off when I'm, you know, turning the sculpture around and stuff to uh, to work on it. Okay. I still have my uh, paper clay. Keep it in a sealed Ziploc bag and I'm continuing to add water to it as I work just because it takes uh, quite a bit of time uh, to do this process and uh, the paper clay dries out quite uh, quickly and I don't want it, uh, you know, I don't want to waste all this. I don't remember if I mentioned this in a previous video or not either, but I have uh, drawn on these uh, little tabs where these are going, where the wings are going to be placed. Okay, so I'm not putting those on yet uh, because I don't want to have to, you know, twist and turn uh, the rest of the dragon form with these wings flopping back, flopping back and forth and uh, causing all kinds of difficulty. Okay, um, now I've already show, I have already shown you how I make these little feathers, but I'm just going to show you again. Okay, and then I take a sharp tool, you could use a toothpick, Um, I want these feathers to also look a little bit like leaves um, just because of the type of dragon that I'm making. Okay, so like that. And actually I meant to put some of this on first. I'm just using some white glue and in the areas that I am working I'm just adding a thin film of white glue. And this feather actually is a little bit on the large side. I don't want quite that big. At the start, the very base of the legs, I want really small feathers. Okay. And then as I go up the leg, I'm going to increase the size. I'm also trying to stagger the feathers a little bit so that they go in between the ones below uh, whenever I can. Obviously that's not possible all the time, especially when you're changing the scale of the feathers and whatnot, but before I attach the wings, I have most of the area of the feathers uh, added and um, now I'm painting it. 
I'm using acrylic paint and I thin it down with water and I kind of paint up into the feathers so that I can get underneath all of the different little uh, individual feathers so there, are, there aren't uh, areas of uh, blank. Um, you have to be really careful as you're holding it. You can look at it uh, this direction and, and catch any little uh, spaces that you've missed. This is just the first coat and then um, I'll be adding some additional uh, colors on top.